Good morning, lovely people. Um, I know I, I said I wasn't going to do a Yoga Solutions Live today, it being New Year's Eve and everything. But um, ah, I couldn't, I couldn't not. It felt like the right way to start the year, especially since I've got my um, my cameras in place now. Uh, things have been replaced. Thanks to all you amazing people that have um, supported me getting back on track. So uh, I thought I'd start the new year with a with a last minute um, yoga solutions live uh, as a little thank you and and yeah it feels like the right thing to be doing. So um, I I only put only decided this morning so I haven't got any questions um, and I haven't practiced. <laughs> All I've done is come here and and um, I've set up my cameras to try them out really. So um, I'll be interested to see what happens. Um, I'll probably just share my practice with you. So, yes, so this is your Yoga Solutions Live on this um, rather lovely New Year's Eve day, um, the 31st of December 2019, the last of, last of the year, and, um, and I'm Mark J. Ekwabiba. Yes, and uh, yeah, 2020, oh my god. <laughs> Who would have thought it? And that's the sort of uh, date that um, I used to think of as the, the you know, the absolute future when uh, we're all going to be on with jetpacks and that sort of thing. <laughs> but um, anyway, gosh, yes, New Year. 2019 was an interesting year. Um, in that, uh, in that way that um, uh, there's a sort of little Chinese insult. <laughs> Or a curse, if you like, it says, may your life be interesting. Um, but um, uh, it was challenging, and but but I don't know that the experience of um, how everyone uh, rallied around my um, to help with my um, uh, with a robbery and and help replace, get me back on track, and get me back to working. It, that, it was a life changing event for me. Um, just feeling the. The degree of uh, appreciation out there, and um, yes, I've been I've been sort of throwing my stuff out there, uh, giving it giving it away basically, um, because I want the work to spread with it with this sort of rather unusual business plan of uh, <laughs> if you give it away for free, then people will want to work with you eventually, and um, and and uh, and the feedback I got from everyone that contributed. Was uh, that um that this work is making a difference and um, yeah that makes me very happy and uh, and my um, online courses are taking off uh, there's a there's another one coming up soon uh, there's a there's an intro on the 9th of January if you want to join and uh, it's it's my opportunity to really really share the depth of the work which normally is reserved for teacher training courses. Um, but I, I, in some ways, this is kind of better because online uh, I have to come up with the with the information. Uh, in person, what, what you get is um, is the, the direct somatic experience of being without complication. When, when I work with you one to one, I can help you find a, a physical relationship where you're free of the complications. So you experience support from touch. You experience space and the centering. But whether it's rec recognised or not is another matter, because um, you know so, something that I'm often saying is uh, if, if you could, if you already are physically familiar with these new relationships, you would already be doing it. So one of the things one of the things that happens when when you work one to one with me or in person with me is that there there can be um, at, as I give you the the sort of relationships that leave you free. To move free of complications, free of that hamstring, free of that shoulder, the the, the overriding experience will be unfamiliarity. So, um, what the online courses seem to do is because it's an intensive; it's over six six weeks, well eight eight weeks for the next one if you include the intro session. What happens with the um, online processes, I, I can respond directly to people on screen just the same way as if they're in the room, but instead of directly transmitting the somatic experience through my hands, um, I have to transmit it through information. And so people 
uh, get to understand it better, I think. Um, that, that was the outcome of the um, haptic intelligence course. I had, had uh, people there that had gone through my full, uh, to, uh, well, the, the early version of my 200 hour training. It's actually 300 hours, but, um, and they said that uh, through the, this process of being with one basic condition, home support from touch, uh, <coughs> which was the haptic intelligence course, um, for six weeks and me going in, into the depth of you know every part of it, what it all meant, uh, they they sort of got it. They got it more perhaps than they got it when they're on the course. Uh, their bodies um, experienced it on the course, but the understanding of it um, was clearer because they could uh, because the the physical progression matched the understanding. So, and that's the normal way of understanding, generally speaking, in the West. And uh, my baseline premise is that uh, in order to um, find the truth of the yoga you you, you need to actually uh, reverse things um, and not necessarily impose ideas upon uh, from the head on the body but to immerse in the body to get your clues as to what what is meant to happen and um and that's what my courses are about is how to actually do that how to how to enter as witness to the body without the complications of misinterpretation uh, which is, you know, that that's a function of being a human, really, as we're constantly interpreting our sensations, and um, and uh, that that interpretation forms our maps. Whereas actually, um, what yoga is 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 direct presence to what is, uh, without that filter, and um, and my work helps you get there directly on how to be with direct sensory presence to what is. And um, so, yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm really enjoying how it's all unfolding and changing for me. Um, it's a massive clear out 2019 uh, on, on more than one level. I you know, cleared out my, my, my home, my, uh, my shed, um, cleared out this space. Uh, and with the, with the incident um, where I lost everything, um, I cleared out all the old gear. And it's all uh, made space for... A new thing to happen in 2020, which feels right to me. So here's to an exciting new year and an exciting 2020 for all of you. It's an auspicious number. It's, um, yeah. So yeah, I'm looking to forward to seeing what unfolds. So that being said, let's do some yoga. I don't want to just uh, talk at you. Um, so what what shall I do? Um, well, I'll, I'll work with. I'll work with what I'm on, um, which is uh, my. Well, I, I'm working with the re my relationship to space because um, that's going to be my next online course. So, uh, and I've got a shape to it. But, um, uh, this is how I prepare: is I, I'm just with my relationship to space uh, up until the day I start, and over that time, I build up a, a map. Um, a series of things to do and whatnot. So um, let's begin with that. And the, the simplest uh, way to begin is to take out the complication of holding myself up in space and uh, lie down. So uh, I'm just going to make the camera a little bit brighter so that um, it's easy, a bit, a bit easier to see. Uh, let's add that. Add a little brightness. That should do it. Okay. So if you want to join me, this might be a little uh, taster of the online introductory workshop. So to start with, um, when I lie down, one of the reasons I lie down is so that I can be in relationship to touch through the back of my body, um, through the head, through the uh, upper back and shoulders. And by shoulders, uh, you might need to join in with that. You might need to do something to get the shoulders to touch the ground. Most people are busy holding their shoulders forwards in some way or back and down. Either way, you need to find a touching relationship to the ground. And then pelvis and feet. Um, so, so that, you know, one of the reasons I do that is so that I can start to relate 
to those points of contact behind them, and it's through breathing. So if you, if you uh, get involved with, you can bring your hands to the top of the chest, and if you can rest a little bit of weight on the sternum, that's useful. Um, and just get a sense of how the breath empties between the top of the throat and the chest. There's an emptying sensation. There's essentially the, the ribs working um, to uh, help gather around an, an emptying pair of lungs. But the ribs are the, this three-dimensional sort of structure that, that wrap around between breastbone and spine. So it's not just the top, it's not just the front. Um, but I am interested in the top half of the rib cage. So if your shoulders are on the ground behind you, um, hands turned inside out to rest on your uh, chest, so you can see one thing just hanging there. And the feeling of where you touch the ground of the head uh, happening from up inside the top of the throat. So you get a feeling of spaciousness, uh, particularly as you release the breath. You feel that. A lengthening feel. And um, I don't know if you can hear, but um, when I find it, there's a physical engagement that sort of makes this sound. A sighing sound, a sibilance of um, ujjayi. Uh, what was that? What was, it? What was that? My phone, just checking. Okay, it's fine. So if you can um, be with that feeling with the exhale, then engaging with the touch that it's meeting. So the, the emptying in the chest will sort of press you into the ground in the base of the spine, I think. It's just some part of the lower half of the body. It could even be the ribs directly behind you, or the shoulders. If that connects to the ground, um, if the release of the breath in the top of the throat connects to the ground in the back of the head, then you can replace the this two-directional sort of intention in your movement with a single action of breathing into the space be be between points of contact. So there's a feeling of uh, pressing into the ground through the head and whatever else is on the ground. So the base of the spine, possibly, shoulders, maybe, feet. Just pressing to breathe into the space between those things. So it becomes a kind of celebratory breath that uh, is, uh, I often refer to as Sikh Kali, where you smile with breath in wide uh, as you meet space behind you, as you engage with the earth, looking for support. And then when you release the breath within that engagement, Something different happens. And um, basically, you relating to the space behind you. So, what I'd like you to do now is try that in a different orientation. Let's change cameras. So, where are we? In this one? Yeah. So, this is my other lovely new camera. I'm very happy with this. Um, yeah. So if you if you come to standing, and just have one foot forwards, one foot back, and recreate that situation by by clasping your hands, and then sort of turning the hands backwards, so that the thumb side of things can be a point of support for your head. Okay, and um, what most people do when they put their hands on their head is they they tend to um, sort of pull forwards with the arms. Whereas actually what you need to do is you need to look for support. So the, the hands are, are held and the head touches the hands as much as the hands are touching the head. And uh, so it's a point of support. It's not, a, um, it's not a fight between you and your head. <laughs> you, you, you want to kind of, um, you want to kind of, uh, excuse the Jimmy Jams by the way. <laughs> um, it was a very last minute decision. But uh, anyway, you want to kind of lean into your hands, and that will lead to an extension response. But 
um, at the same time you need to be able to let go of the ground on the inside so that you're not just leaning back heavily against your spine into, into the ground. What we need to do is we need to lean into space. So if you can allow the weight a little more forwards, off the heels slightly, yeah? so uh, the weight goes into the front of the feet as opposed to the weight being on the heels, the weight goes into the front of the feet, then you can sort of lean back from that through your head and let go of the ground on the inside. And that leads to a, a, a sort of much more spacious uh, extension response from the whole of the spine centered behind the heart. Now, if you can basically breathe into the space between points of contact, which in this case is only the back of the head, and the underside of the fronts of the feet. So uh, meeting that space behind the heels, underneath the feet, uh, behind the legs, um, as if you're sort of looking for support from underneath you, from behind you. Um, if you can breathe back from both points of contact, then, you'll, then what you'll be essentially doing is using those points of contact for support. And the breath will be less sort of a lift in the front of you and more of a widening behind you. And again, that breath, seat card, is smiling the breath wide into the back of the body will help you find it. And that widening should give you purchase through the back of the head so you're supported forwards. That widening from the touch of the feet in the thighs and the meeting space behind the legs should give you a sense of support from from space as you breathe and then the job is to not retract from that support as you raise the breath instead you empty on the inside and the action of meeting support behind you as you empty on the inside is the thing that gets the heels to touch the ground so you don't put your weight back on your heels you touch with your heels and the result will be quite a light sensation of openness in space. We start to be able to trust the space behind us as a point of support. We can relax back over support, like you would if there was a prop all the way up through your back. Like, like you would if there was a surface behind the legs for you to drop the legs into. And that's the feeling. And what it leaves is a lot of space in the on the front of the spine, which allows you to open up a little more to be vertical. And this constant relationship to sort of using the space behind for support as you breathe, if you can stay with that relationship, leaning back into the space behind you as you release the breath, then in front of you empties, and that goes with the heels resting or touching the ground behind the front of the feet to end up supported and fly. Mm. Okay? I um, feel like I need to redress that uh, just to give the, the other possibility forward bends. Um, if, uh, let's, let's put it on the closer camera. So if um, you're in a forward bend situation, quite good to let go of uh, holding yourself up with your back or holding yourself down with your hamstrings. So leaning on your thighs is a, is a good start, as long as you're not being heavy on your knees by sitting back. You want to give the weight to your feet, front of the feet. I'm not suggesting that you actually take the heels off like I am. That's, um, that's quite difficult and involves um, quite strong proprioceptive responses in the in the muscles of the toes and whatnot. Uh, but basically you, the weight needs to be a little more on the fronts of the feet so that you can sort of let go of the ground on the inside. And as you let go of the ground on the inside with the release of the breath, you can start to relax into the space behind you. So Again, the head becomes a thing that can sort of rest into the space behind you. It's just the way 
the head works. It's it's a, it's like a it's, it's, it works a bit like a gyroscope. You know, um, it can float in space, and its orientation um, decides where the weight goes. And what we want is for the weight to not be carried by the back or the joints. So this relationship to the space behind your head gives you a point of gives you a point of support that um, allows you to breathe into the between points of support, the feet and the back of the head. If you can breathe into that, then the whole of the back of the body opens up. If you stay with that relationship as you release the breath, the whole of the front of the body releases away from the ground. And that allows the heels to touch the ground to give you support from that touch. By touch, I don't mean weight. I mean the act of touching the ground. And your left resting into the space behind you. Your left resting into the space behind you. And light, empty, relaxed in the space in front of you which makes life quite a bit easier. Okay. <laughs> um, that's pretty much my time. Oh, that's nice. And uh, you, you can, you know, I, I like to do a few postures just to show the sort of generic principles, but um, you can work with specific areas and uh, we started with the neck and throat and if that stayed with you during the other practices then you will now have a nice neck and throat and the the shoulder should be freer and the head should feel lighter if not then you can do something very simple it's it's relationship to space and like I was saying that the, the head sort of acts as a thing that can stay steadily steadily in space whilst everything up underneath it kind of moves around it's it's kind of a gyroscopic relationship uh, you, yeah there's an advert where, where you've got chicken you've got a chicken looking at the, at the camera and and the person moves the chicken up and down but the head stays where it is it's um it's a bit like that <laughs> um most of us are head led which means we are moving our bodies, our heads around from the head. And um, that's really confusing. What we need is a relationship, an understanding of the relationship between the head and the ground, uh, or the head and space, that allows it to be a spacious, have a spacious relationship with the body. And uh, I think that's going to be the, um, probably the intro workshop. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll wait to see. It's, the, it's actually the first theme of the, of the uh, proprioceptive intelligence course, but um, we'll see We'll see what happens in the intro. It'll be more in, more to do with um, uh, the group that turn up and what's needed. So I might do another generic thing over, uh, it's a longer session, so we'll get a lot, lot more out of it. But um, you can just explore, just to give you something in the meantime, but the head is meant to be free of the ground. It's meant to be free in space. So whenever you put weight down somewhere, it's kind of good to feel how the head releases up away from that. So wherever you put weight down, it's kind of good to see how the head releases away from it. See? So wherever you put the weight down, the head releases away from it. And um, the place that it's releasing so wherever you put the weight down, the head releases away from it. Then below that is a space that, as if the head is a point of support, below that is a space that can breathe. So you, you meet that space and you breathe. And then if you stay meeting that space as you release the breath, you're essentially staying, trusting the spine as a point of, uh, trusting the head as a point of support. So as you lean into it, the rest of you will empty away from it. So you end up with... Um, a very spacious neck, I think that's fine. So wherever you put the weight, the head tends to release away from the ground. But if that's a point of support, then you can lean into it and breathe. And if you stay leaning into it as you release the breath, what happens is you get supported away from it. So you end up with a lot of space in that sense. So, uh, anyway, um, 
if that was seemed a bit vague, don't worry. It um, takes a very, it takes a, a, a deep sensitivity and an awful lot of release because we do spend most of our time controlling the head with the head, um, or more accurately with the eyes. And the, the, the way the eyes move and the muscles around the base of the skull move, um, go together. And uh, it's, it's about being head led with, with the sort of fear response, the alert response in the eye uh, that leads to neck problems or cutting off from the body in the first place. And uh, this, this um, ability to let it go and allow the head to float in its housing comes from underneath. I'm talking about the first vertebra of the neck here. It's a, it's a very, um, it's an elusive thing to find if you're coming from a place of stress. The advantage of finding it is that even if you start stress, you can't, you can't sustain stressfulness and let go. So if you, if you find a relationship to space um, that allows you to release these controlling muscles, allows you to sort of float in space, then there is a there is a sort of a physiological benefit of bringing into the paras into the um, parasympathetic nervous system to get calm and start to enter a meditative state. So it's an important subject, and it's going to be the first subject of the, uh, the first course content subject of my proprioceptive intelligence series coming up. Uh, there's a, like I said, there's another intro on January the 9th. If you want to join, there's still a few places left. Um, um, it will be live for whoever books. Um, I've got, uh, um, I'm not limiting the numbers, but um, it probably won't be more than 15 or 20 or so. Um, but I can, you know, I'll be able to see all of you and, and you ask questions and you know, pop up on the screen so I can see, see what you're talking about. And uh, so do join me. If, you, if you're interested, um, what else? Uh, and then, um, yeah, New Year, the, before that, actually, um, up in Glasgow, I've got a weekend with Pete Blackaby. He teaches a Saturday, I teach a Sunday. And, um, and we're looking at fundamental principles of practice, so a kind of a, a principle-based approach to practice. And even if you're familiar with the stuff, it will be life-changing, always is. Um, and both me and Pete work from similar principles, as in, you know, um, efficiency of effort, uh, kindness, um, no, not, do no harm, essentially. Um, but uh, they are both, and, and the idea being to liberate natural function. But uh, we have different applications because we have different ideas about what natural function means. And um, uh, uh, what Pete's talking about is he's talking about sitting down, standing up turning around, lying down, walking, but, you know, uh, daily functioning movements. And I, I agree, totally. Um, that's what yoga is about. It's about uh, making those things simple and easy and um, so that our lives can be so that, and this is where I, I, um, I differ slightly, is so that we have best, um, a good quality of life that we can thoroughly enjoy so I would also include, in terms of function, I would also in include pleasure. <laughs> the idea of expression, you know, I, I, I include um, expressing in space. Um, the full expression of uh, celebratory feelings in the body, because they, because uh, it's part of our proprioceptive feedback system. You know, the way, the way we engage with space, the way we occupy space. Um, reflects back to us through a biofeedback system to make us feel the way that we feel. And um, uh, I think it's worth exploring that kind of functionality, as in how am I functioning as not only as a human being, but as a, as a person in space. Um, and if you can find the pleasure of that, then I, I feel like we're, we're, we're finding a little more of the, the purpose of... Um, looking at such things that our relationships to support and movement and that's it. So um, it's an interesting weekend. Uh, Pete on the Saturday, me on the Sunday, looking at the same principles from perhaps different agendas. And uh, yeah, people tend to enjoy it. Uh, I had one comment a while ago uh, saying it's a bit like booking, uh, booking for a gig to go and see uh, the small faces and the kinks on the same uh, billy. 
um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I I always think it's um, it's very useful to look at um, when there's a fundamental principle, something like yoga or tai chi or anything that's basically about well-being. I think it's an important thing to be able to look at it from not just the thing that you learn. You, know? you need to be able to look at it from different angles, and and it's uh, when you do that, um, the subject becomes less two-dimensional. You know, you flesh it out. You start to see it from all perspectives, and rather than it being in the usual um, sort of intellectual mode of right and wrong, this and that, and you know, this versus that, which is a lot of what the body work bodywork world involves. You've got people arguing about whether kneecap should go up or kneecap should go down, and um, it's it's the the, the argument is a, has arisen through people looking at the subject from their fixed position. So they're seeing a three dim a two dimensional image. And then the other person is looking at the same thing from a fixed position. So they see a two dimensional image that is oppositional to the first. And so they, they end up arguing with each other. Whereas actually what they need to do is see the whole picture. And, and uh, so I'm all in favor. I, I think it's really important to um, involve yourself in looking at your 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 passion, the thing that, you, that uh, really you want to understand. It's really important to be able to look at it from different angles. And one of the things Vander talks about was um, you know, doing this. You, you you must always find a way of being a student, and um, and and I do that by uh, I occasionally go to Diane Long. She's one, she's one of the teachers that um, still shows me some blind spots when I. When I uh, uh, when I see her, which is fantastic. So I go into total confusion, and not knowing what's going on as well, because it's a blind spot. So what else would a blind spot involve? You know? and, and I do other things. I, I've, I've done Qigong, I've done Tai Chi, I've done Feldenkrais, I've done Gaia Alexander. And uh, for me, it all comes back to it being yoga. And uh, yeah, that, that's what it comes back to. To me, for for um, other people I work with, um, it was a student up in Scotland, uh, Alan, and um, and actually uh, Jane, who's my assistant up in Scotland. Um, they they they're both deeply involved in the in the Tai Chi world and uh, Qigong, and um, they they use this work to uh, their work with me to um, get very accurate about their Tai Chi. Because uh, the Tai Chi has a has a, a holistic model that, in principle, can c cover the whole of what I'm covering with my yoga, but if it's um, but there's a whole culture behind it that sort of leads how the shape of the information, and so it, it, it can become two dimensional if you look at it from a different angle, and, and that's what I'm offering as a way of looking at the the, the function of being a human being from as many angles. Well, I have six of them. From as many angles as is um, useful, then you get to flesh out the thing. And perhaps the reason I have six, uh, six of these angles is it's from each side, but from above and below. So six directions. So I've just sort of realised that. Really. Um, okay. Anyway, that, um, I'm rambling on. I've gone over time, and possibly a bit, bit excited about 2020. And uh, very happy to uh, have everything working again and back online. I shall say um, that is it from me. <laughs> I am Mark J. Aquaviva from the Aquaviva School of Yoga signing off. Oh, sorry, yes. Um, January the 4th, 5th, is it? Uh, yes, I think it is. It's the first weekend of January. I'm up in Glasgow doing this weekend with Pete Blackby. That's what I was rambling on about. And then uh, the following weekend, uh, I've got the same uh, setup. Uh, Pete on the Saturday, me on the Sunday. Uh, so that will be the 11th, 12th, I think, of January in Brighton. So there's still space on, on a couple of spaces on both of those. Um, so book if you're interested. Otherwise, hopefully, I will see you on January the 9th for my next introductory workshop on the Proprioceptive Course, Proprioceptive Intelligence series. And the course itself starts on the 16th. So. Lots of love to you all, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I shall see you same time, same place next week for your Yoga Solutions 
live broadcast. Lots of love. Bye now.